Hi children, <coughs> welcome to another uh, discussion class. And in this session, we are going to discuss the chemistry part of 2022 G mains examination. G mains 2022 June session. June session, we are discussing 27th June paper. 27th morning session, we are going to discuss in this class. So, the paper is 27th morning session. June 27th morning session, G mains paper, chemistry part, we are going to discuss in this class. Right? Let us start the first question. See, it is a statement based question, assertion, reason type question. Look at the assertion statement. At 10 degrees Celsius, the density of 5 molar solution KCl, the solution is cooled to minus 21 degrees Celsius. Molality of the solution will remain unchanged. See, we are taking a solution and cooling down. That means the temperature is dropped. Molality of the solution remain unchanged. True or false? It is a true statement. It is a true statement as all of us know. Molality does not depend on temperature. Isn't it? If it is molarity, that depends on temperature. Because molarity is mole per liter. Wherever there is volume term comes, it is temperature dependent. Molality is, what is molality? Molality small m is equal to number of moles per kilogram of solvent. There is no volume term. So, it is independent of temperature. So, upon cooling, there is no change in molality. That is a true statement. Agreed? Now, the reason. The molality of solution does not change with the temperature as mass remains unaffected. So, that is a correct justification. So, reason is also true statement and that is the correct explanation of assertion. So, which choice? Option. Option A will be the correct answer. Option A will be the correct answer. Both are true statement. Assertion is true. Reason is true. And reason is the correct justification of assertion statement. Is it clear? Next. Answer is option A. Next. Based upon VSCPR theory, there is the list 1, list 2 given based on typical question coming from the molecular geometry. Let us have a look at T shaped molecule. If you take XEF4, XEF4, all of you know it is a square planar system. So it is square planar system. So C should match with the 1. C should match with the 1. C1, we have two choices. Now, SF4. SF4 is C so shaped. SF4 is C so shaped. So, XEF4, this is XEF4, which is square planar. It is square planar with the two lone pairs, and the molecule is AB4 E2 type. What about SF4? SF4 is C so shaped. You know, this is SF4. It is C so shaped. The molecule is AB4 E type. C so shaped, right? Now, uh, D should be with the 2. C1, D2. We do not get our answer. Both are same. Anyway, we are going to eliminate option A and option C. Now, CLF3, CLF3 is well known T shape. CLF3 is well known T shape. CLF3, bend T shape. Bend T shape. The molecule is of the type AB3, E2 type. T shape. So, 3 with A with 3. A with 3. 
A with the 3 and we get our answer as option B. Option B will be the correct answer. Let us match the last one also, which is that BF3. BF3 is well-known trigonal planar. BF3, well-known trigonal planar. This is BF3, which is AB3 type molecule trigonal planar. So that is also matching with the option B. Option B is the correct answer, right? <coughs> Next question. Option B is the correct answer. Next one. Once again, a list question matching the list 1 and 2. Let's see how it uh, gets matched with. Option A, spontaneous process. Spontaneous process. Spontaneous process will match with uh, this one, right? So, A will match with the 2 because spontaneous process, delta G should be negative, isn't it? So, spontaneous process, delta G should be negative. So, A with the 2 means, A with the 2 means option A is out, isn't it? Now, process delta P 0, delta T 0. Simple one, it is 3 isothermal and isobaric, B with the 3. B with the 3. A 2 B 3. So, this is out. So, here this is out. Now, C delta H reaction. Delta H reaction. C with the 4. Delta H reaction can be calculated. The sum of bond enthalpies of reactants minus products. You know the formula. Right. So, C with the 4. C with the 4. C with the 4. We get our answer. Option B is the correct answer because here it is C with 1. And now let us examine last one also exothermic, exothermic, no doubt at all. Delta H less than 0. So D will be with the 1. Okay. So answer is option B. Next. Answer is option B. Matching the list 1 with the list 2. Once again. So, many matching type questions. Lyophilic colloid. Lyophilic colloids will match with the. Lyophilic colloids will match with the 2. Protective colloid A4, 2. A with the 2. A with the 2 means this is out, this is out. We have A2, A2. Now, emulsions. Emulsions are liquid, liquid, salt. B with the 1. B with the 1, but we don't get our answer. Now, C, positively charged, positively charged, you see it is an NCRT point, C, positively charged will go with the fourth one, so it is C4 and negatively charged D3, and correct answer is option A. So, the answer lies over C and D and it is a typical example explained in the NCRT for getting positive salt, negative salt based on the method of preparation. If you are hydrolyzing FeCl3 with the hot water, you are getting positively charged salt due to the accumulation of Fe3 plus. And if you are hydrolyzing FeCl3 in alkaline medium NaOH, there is excess NaOH, OH minus will adhere to the surface and the colloid will turn negatively charged. An example I am sure you have seen in the prepare, I mean in the charge area, difference in charge according to the different method of preparation explained in NCRT. It is there in the text. Okay. Next. So the correct answer is option A. Option A. Next. Again, assertion reason type question. The ionic radii O2 minus Mg2 plus are same. Wrong. Wrong. They are not same. They are not same. They are different. One is O2 minus, one is Mg2 plus. They are, they are isoelectronic species. Quite naturally, what will be the order of their size for isoelectronic species? O2 minus is larger than Mg2 plus. This is correct and that is wrong. And now, what about option? I mean, re reason, reason. They are, yes, that's a, that's a true statement. So, assertion is wrong. Reason is correct. Assertion is wrong and the reason is correct. So, which one? Assertion wrong, reason correct. 
ऑप्शन डी इज एन एड ऑप्शन डी एसर्शन फॉल्स रेसन करेक्ट राइट ऑप्शन डी नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन ऑप्शन डी नेक्स्ट अगेन मैचिंग हाउ मेनी मैचिंग क्वेश्चन ओ माई गॉड कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ गोल्ड और कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ गोल्ड और कॉन्सेंट्रेशन हाइड्रो मेटलर्जी लीचिंग एन ए सी एन एन ए सी एन लीचिंग यूसिंग साइनाइड प्रोसेस लीचिंग प्रोसेस हाइड्रो मेटलर्जी सो ए विथ फोर ए विथ फोर मीन्स दिस इज आउट दिस इज आउट इट इज ए विथ फोर नाउ बी लीचिंग ऑफ अलूमिना लीचिंग ऑफ अलूमिना We are making use of NaOH Bayer's process B with the two. So A four B two. You get your answer option B. Option B is the correct answer. Let us cross check the others also. Fourth stabilizer. Fourth stabilizer. Option C with the one correct. Aniline used as fourth stabilizers. Reference CRT. Blister copper. Blisters are created due to escaping of sulfur dioxide gas. Due during the uh, Bessemer uh, process in the Bessemer converter, when you when you do the auto redox, you are getting molten copper with blisters due to the escaping of sulfur dioxide gas. So the answer is option D. Sorry, option B. This is the correct answer. Option B. Next, addition of sulfuric acid to barium. peroxide produces sulfuric acid to barium peroxide see absolutely no doubt you will get a hydrogen peroxide because an acid medium interacting with it's basically like a, a, a peroxide interacting with acid you are getting hydro even with water you are getting hydrogen peroxide so you should get hydrogen peroxide answer is no doubt option d option d is the correct answer and this is the reaction you can find in the textbook for the preparation of hydrogen peroxide the very first method referred in the text okay barium peroxide plus sulfuric acid giving barium sulfate and hydrogen peroxide don't forget to see in the textbook it is essential to make use of hydrated barium peroxide not the raw anhydrous barium peroxide it has to be hydrated barium peroxide that also is very important and significant look at the textbook because otherwise the reaction will not sustain okay next becl2 reacts with lithium aluminum hydride to give becl2 reacts with lithium aluminum hydride to give another equation referred in the textbook right the direct equation available in the ncrt and i am sure you might have seen this reaction lithium aluminum hydride with beryllium chloride you get beh2 plus licl plus alcl3 available in the text answer option c okay direct question from the ncrt next oh again matching question how many matching questions list 1 with the list 2 R four SI R four SI CS three four times SI CS three four times SI will match with option three. I mean third one silane. It can only be called as simply silane because it doesn't give you any polymeric product. Okay, so A with the three A with the three. This is out. This is out. A with the three. Now what about B CS three SI OH three times. R S I O H three times can give you cross-linked polymers. You can get cross-linked polymers. Which one cross-linked chain? Allah dimeric silicon. It is two D silicon. Option four B with the four B with the four we get our answer. B with the four we get our answer. Option D. Let us cross-check the others also. Option C, R two S I O H two times. It is well explained in the textbook. You get chain silicates, C chain silicon polymers. That is C one and R three S I O H can give you dimeric silicons only. Option D with the I mean choice D with the two. It may give you only dimeric product. or rather you must to know what is the important application of this particular substance this is used for 
used for blocking the chain of a polymeric silicon polymeric chain chain growth is blocked by r3soh refer text okay next question the correct answer is option d next question heating white phosphorus with a concentrated naoh solution gives mainly two three area in the textbook the same reaction explained in the ncrt preparation of phosphine you can find that reaction of phosphorus you can find that as a in text question it is given in the ncrt and the answer is you get phosphine you get phosphine and sodium hypophosphite option d is the correct answer and refer this reaction two or three times in a single chapter the reaction is referred in the text a very important reaction okay next which of the following will have maximum destabilization due to crystal field titanium cobalt copper co uh, cobalt water water ammonia cyanide no doubt we have a strong ligand cyanide a strong ligand cyanide is available that will give you the maximum crystal field stabilization a strong ligand will give you maximum crystal field stabilization option c is the correct answer option c next again we have a statement based question classical smoke occurs in cool humid climate reducing in nature yes that's a true statement photochemical smoke has components ozone yes 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 that is also a true statement both are true statements option option a option a is the correct answer both the statements are true right directly picked from the text okay both the statements are true option a is the correct answer next oh my god which of the following structure separating funnel separating funnel this is the separating funnel go to purification and characterization how the separating system works and how the separating funnel is utilized in the one with one example given with the diagram there in the textbook and uh, sometimes you might have seen that in the laboratory also separating funnel option a direct question option a next a and b respectively are a and b respectively are a upon ozonolysis you get ethane 1 2 dicarboxylic and glyoxal ethane 1 2 dicarboxylic and glyoxal respectively let us take up option a 1 methyl cyclohex 1 3 diene 1 methyl cyclohex 1 3 diene this is cyclohex 1 methyl 1 3 diene 1 methyl 1 2 3 1 3 diene this is 1 methyl 1 3 diene 1 3 diene this treated for ozonolysis this treated for ozonolysis I am sure you know it's going to break here, here one oxygen and here one oxygen. It's going to break here, here one oxygen and here one oxygen. The product is, this is the product. You get a keto group here and you get a, you get a CHO group here. And of course the remaining part, this will be converted to glyoxide, CHO, CHO. So you are getting glyoxal, okay, fine. Ethane 1, 2 dicarboxylic. No, this is not ethane 1, 2 dicarboxylic. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It is 4 oxopentanol. It is 4 oxopentanol. You are not getting ethane 1, 2 dicarboxylic. Right, it is not, it is not uh, ethane 1, 2. So, this is not you are getting from option A. Option A is ruled out. Option A is ruled out. Remaining all reactions you must try writing. Okay, let us check out option B. 
ऑप्शन बी साइक्लोहेक्स वन थ्री डाइन साइक्लोहेक्स वन थ्री डाइन दिस इज साइक्लोहेक्स वन टू थ्री वन थ्री डाइन वेन दिस इज ट्रीटेड फॉर ओजोनोलिस वन सेकेंड यू नो इज गोन टू ब्रेक हियर वन ऑक्सीजन हियर वन ऑक्सीजन हियर इज गोन टू ब्रेक हियर वन ऑक्सीजन हियर वन ऑक्सीजन हियर सो दिस पार्ट ऑफ द सिस्टम विल टर्न ग्लायोग सी एच ओ सी एच ओ सो ग्लायोग इट्स ओके नाउ दिस पार्ट ऑफ द सिस्टम इज गोन टू बी सी एच ओ सी एच ओ is it ethane 1 2 dicarboxylate ethane 1 2 dicarboxylate that's perfect that's perfect okay so this one matching our option b now cyclopentene 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 this is cyclopentene when treated for ozonolysis this when treated for ozonolysis is going to break here here and here you will get cho cho 1 2 3 4 5 you get pentane diol pentane diol compound b you are give, you are getting 5 oxo hexanal compound b you should get 5 oxo hexanal but when you take up option option b cyclopentene this one this one when we try we are getting pentane diol so that choice is also ruled out right now next one one methyl cyclohex 14 diene one methyl cyclohex 14 diene i am checking option c one methyl cyclohex 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 14 diene if this is if this is ozonolysed is going to break here oxygen oxygen is going to break here oxygen oxygen see you can't get a, you can't get a glyoxal you will not get a glyoxal here you will get 1 2 3 propane dia one of the product is propane dia we should get a glyoxal and the other part also you don't get glyoxal there you get 1 2 3 3 oxo butanol 3 oxo butanol i suggest all of you try writing the entire reactions a very important question all the exercises has to be practiced right so definitely option c is not going to work out now we don't have to work out i believe option d will be the answer anyway let us examine option d let us examine option d cyclohex 13 diene cyclohex 13 diene already we have checked cyclohex 13 diene already we have checked so that we don't have to so first compound already we have checked here and we got this is correct we omitted this choice because of this so that is okay now one methyl cyclopent 1 in one methyl cyclopent 1 in this is cyclopent one methyl cyclopent 1 in will that give you 5 oxo hexanal let us examine let us examine is going to break here you got an oxygen here and here and the result will be it becomes a keto group and you get cho 1 2 3 4 5 6 5 oxo hexanal you get it correct 5 oxo hexanal we get it correct and the answer is option d so i am sure almost all of you know how to find the ozonolysis product getting ozonolysis product it's a matter of just break over the double bond and attach one oxygen each to see what will be the product obtained it can be aldehyde it can be a ketone right reductive ozonolysis i'm talking reductive ozonolysis here it is reductive ozonolysis zinc with water so if there is the breaking carbon contain ch group you will get aldehyde if the breaking carbon is c group you will get a ketone and you can easily find out what is ozonolysis product to have a cross check and this is a typical type of question okay next one so the answer should be option d answer should be option d next one the major product of the following reaction is mm -hmm. so 
Thiophenyl is the nucleophile. Thiophenyl is the nucleophile. This is thiophenyl, the nucleophile. Answer should be answer should be option A. Why? Because this fluorine will not be attacked, it will be as such. And the attack happens over here. And what kind of attack? The attack is a SN2 reaction. Because you can see dimethyl formamide, it is, it is giving a non-polar medium. A non-polar medium and a group like a thiophenyl group will promote a substitution reaction via SN2 mechanism. So what happens? What happens? The iodine which is the leaving group with a solid wedge will be replaced with a PHS minus with a dashed wedge because iodine leaving from one side, PHS minus attacking from the other side. I hope you understood. It's a backseat driven attack. It's a backseat driven attack. Therefore, the product should be like this. In option B, in option B, you see, this is not possible. Option C, this is wrong because it is the new nucleophile attached from the same site. It is not possible. It is backseat driven. SN2 mechanism. Here, this is wrong. And of course, this is also wrong. So, option A is the correct answer because thiophenyl group attacks by SN2 mechanism. Okay, children. Next. Option A should be the correct answer. Next. Which of the following yield benzaldehyde as product? Benzaldehyde as product. Option A. Yes, it is possible. First, OH will be replaced by chlorine. You get a, a benzoyl chloride. Then it is Lindlar's catalyst. You will get benzaldehyde. What is the reaction? Rosenmund reduction. Okay. So, that is possible. This is not possible because this will be converted to COOH. Okay. This is not possible because this cannot reduce ester. No reaction. Ester will not be reduced by NaBH4. This is possible. This is controlled oxidation of methyl group. The methyl group when treated with the CRO3 and acetic anhydride. Hope you remember. We are going to get benzylidin diacetate. Benzylidin diacetate. And that upon hydrolysis we get a benzaldehyde. So, A is possible, D is possible, answer should be option C. Answer should be option C. Reaction, A is possible, where in A you can find, we have the detailed reaction available here. We have the detailed reaction available here. See this? You see? Benzoic acid, the OH group is replaced by chlorine and that with the Rosenmund reduction you get a benzaldehyde. This will be converted to COOH and this cannot be reduced. And to this you will get benzylidin diacetate. Benzylidin diacetate which is well explained in the textbook just below a very popular reaction the NCRT explained a TARTS reaction. Just below NCRT, I mean Etard's reaction in the textbook, you can find benzylidin diacetate via which hydrolysis we get benzaldehyde. Controlled oxidation of side chain of benzene ring. Okay, which otherwise, if it is not a controlled oxidation, uh, all of you know that it will be converted to benzoic acid. Okay, next. Again, statement based question. In Hoffman's degradation reaction, the migration of only an alkyl group takes place from carbonyl carbon of the amide to the nitrogen atom. There is an alkyl group migration. Only a possible doubt is this commented alkyl group, whether alkyl group or aryl group, there can be migration. Whether it is alkyl group or aryl group, there can be migration. If you take up Hoffman's degradation reaction, we are starting with the RCONH2. 
with the bromine and alkali first you are getting r c o n h b r that is that is bromamide bromamide okay now this bromamide will be further converted to r c o n this is called a nitrine nitrine this is the active intermediate involved in that reaction now there is a uh, main story happening here is the migration of this alkyl group towards the electron deficient nitrogen atom and thereby you are getting this system turned to rnco which upon hydrolysis you get a rnh2 this is what the reaction see the point of interest discussion in the area is the migration of this group is it possible only for alkyl group no it is possible for alkyl as well as aryl group because aliphatic and aromatic amide primary amide you can get a hoffman's degradation reaction you can get hoffman's bromamide reaction so a very small conventional error in the statement one so we will go for statement one to be wrong and statement two the group is migrating in hoffman degradation reaction to electron deficient atom of course of course it is migrating to the alkyl group is migrating towards the alkyl group is migrating towards electron deficient nitrene system right so statement 2 is correct statement 2 is correct but one is wrong which one one incorrect option d option d will be the correct answer okay right option d next once again matching type question i think so many matching type question already we have seen in the paper Bakelite, Bakelite, well known for electrical switches A2, A2 means, A2 means this is out. Glyptol, Glyptol paints and lacquers, B3, B3, but we don't get the answer. PVC, PVC pour water pipes, C4, C4, we get our answer, option A, option A, and what about D, D1. That is also referred in the textbook. So, answer is first choice, direct question. Okay, next. First choice. 19. An L isomer of a compound A, L isomer, gives a positive test with a tolerance reagent. So, it is L isomer gives a positive test with the tolerance reagent treatment of a with acetic anhydride give triacetate derivative compound a produces optically active compound b and optically inactive compound c on treatment with the bromine water and hno3 respectively compound a is c a is an l isomer l isomer means it can be a or b because this is d isomer you see both are D isomers. So I am eliminating option C and D. We want L. This is D. What is D? The last but one chiral center, the functional group to right hand side compared with the glyceraldehyde configuration. That is D configuration. I am sure all of you remember. This is D configuration. You see, this is D configuration. And we are talking about L isomer. So, option C and D straight away out. Okay. Now, what about A and B? Both A and B will give you test. So, tolerance test is resulted by both A and B. So, we can't find. Triacetate. Yes. 1, 2, 3. Triacetate. We can't distinguish. Now, A produces optically active compound B. And optically inactive compound C on treatment with the bromine water and the nitric acid. Hmm. So the answer is option A. Answer is option A. We got the answer. Answer is option A. Because you see with the nitric acid you should get a optically inactive compound. 
that's only possible with option A. Look at option A. You have CHO, CH2OH, ah, OH, H, OH, H. When treated with the nitric acid, you will be getting COOH, COOH, OH, H, OH, H. This is optically inactive because of the plane of symmetry. It is optically inactive. Sir, then what about B? In B, what you are going to get? The same reaction if you do in option B, you are going to get COOH, COOH, ah, H, OH, OH, H. This is optically active because there is no plane of symmetry. Hope you understand. Right? So, both A and B will be optically active with the bromine water. With the bromine water, only this will be oxidized. With the bromine water, only this will be oxidized. You see, with the bromine water, what will, what will happen? With the bromine water, what is happening is, this will be oxidized. You will be getting COOH, CH2OH, OH, OH, H, H. This is optically active because there is no symmetry, but this is optically inactive. With the nitric acid, which is a strong oxidizing agent, both the CHO group and the CH2OH group will be converted to COOH. Is it clear? And in that case, that means reaction with the nitric acid, the optical activity of the compound A, oxidation product of compound A will be lost. Because COOH, COOH comes as a symmetry. And now, since the two OH groups are on same side, COOH, COOH, it will lose the optical activity. And hence the answer, option A. A beautiful question. Okay. Next. Option A. Ah, here we have the reaction. Here we have the reaction. One which is in the printed format, you can see. You see that with the bromine water, this is converted to COOH, but this part remain as such and now there is no plane of symmetry and it is optically active. What about with the nitric acid? With the nitric acid, this will be converted to COOH and this also will be converted to COOH and now there is a plane of symmetry and the optical activity is lost and it is optically inactive. And that is not possible in compound B. Okay, before all this investigation, you will be eliminating option C and D from the right first sentence where it is commented L isomer. Okay, because the two are D isomers. Next question. Wow, once again matching. Once again matching. A, which is a cationic detergent used in hair conditioners. You might have read in the textbook. So it is A with the 4. A with the 4. We will be eliminating option A and D. A4. Now, what about the next one? This is non-ionic detergent. Non-ionic detergent, famous known for dishwashing. Non-ionic detergent. So D with the 1. A4, D1. But we don't get the answer. What about the next? What about the next? This is anionic detergent. Anionic detergent used in, used in option 2, right? B with the 2, right? B with the 2, so option should be option B. Yes, correct answer. Option B. B with the 2 and C with the 3. And a direct question from textbook, the last chapter regarding detergents and its uses right so that's the end of section a paper a section a part of the paper and now we have 10 more questions from section b numerical part right so that is section b question section b numerical part metal deficiency defect shown by iron iron 0.93 oxygen 1 some Fe2 plus missing and loss of positive charge compensated by presence of Fe3 plus 
percentage of fe2 plus ions in the crystal is percentage of fe2 plus ions in the crystal is you see what is the scenario you have fe 0.93 oxygen 1 that means fe 93 oxygen 100 you know oxygen minus 2 with 100 it will be having minus 200 charge oxygen plus 2 with 93 it will have how much 186 charge isn't it so there is a difference between the positive and negative charge how much is the difference how much is the difference 14 units difference you see that oxygen minus 2 into 100 minus 200 iron plus 2 into 93 you get only 186 which cannot be accepted a crystal system should be electrically neutral so what will be happening sum of the fe2 plus will be converted to fe3 plus how much look at the difference 14 unit is difference so out of 93 iron 14 will be in fe3 plus condition and how much remaining 93 minus 14 79 isn't it 89 90 79 the 79 will be fe fe2 plus so out of 93 iron 14 iron from 2 plus will switch on to 3 plus. Is it clear? Sir, why sir? Why? Because 14 into 3 plus, what is the charge? 14 into 3 plus, what is the charge? Hmm. 42, isn't it? Plus 42. 79 into 2 plus, what is the charge? 79 into 2 plus. 140, 18, 158, isn't it? Plus 1. 58. So, what is the total? 14 into 3, 42. 79 into 2 plus 158. 158, 48. You are getting plus 200. Now, the charge is okay. Now, the charge is balanced. The cationic and anionic part the charge should be balanced. That is the point. Is it clear? So, now what is the question here? The percentage of Fe2 plus, that is the question. Very simple. Percentage of Fe2 plus will be 79 out of 93. 79 out of 93. Is it clear? 79 out of 93. That is the answer. And what about Fe3 plus? What about Fe3 plus? It will be 14 out of 93. That will be Fe3 plus. Clear? So the answer is option not option, it's an integer question. It is somewhat 85 percentage. 79 out of 93, you will get 85 percentage to the nearest integer and the answer is 85. Just a matter of working out the first and second digit to confirm your answer. Okay, next. If uncertainty in velocity and position of a minute particle in space are given, Mass of the particle in gram is, direct question isn't it, delta x into delta p equal to h by 4 pi, uncertainty principle. So, that is delta x into m delta v equal to h by 4 pi and therefore m is equal to h by 4 pi delta x delta v. This is non-data. This data available, this is given in the question, this is given in the question and you can get your answer, should get your answer in grams. Okay, so delta X given, delta V given, you can find out M using uncertainty principle. And the answer should come out as delta V given, delta V, delta X given and you can find the uh, uh, mass as yes mass as h by 4 pi delta v into delta x to work out which check down you will get a somewhat 0 0.02198 kg that is 21.98 rounded off to 
22 grams 22 grams you will get that h value not for pi substitution then delta v substitution and delta x substitution which are direct data given substitute and find out the mass you will get in kilogram convert that into grams next 2 gram non volatile electrolyte solute dissolved in 200 gram of two different solvents a and b whose uh, ebullioscopic constants are given in the ratio 1 is to 8 elevation in boiling point of a and b are in the ratio x by y were value of y is 2 gram non volatile non electrolyte solute dissolving 200 gram two different solvents a and b so solute mass and solvent mass remain the same solute and solvent mass remain the same isn't it and you are given with a ebullioscopic constants in the ratio 1 is to 8 so it's a direct substitution isn't it delta t b a by delta t b b is equal to k b a m divided by k b b m and this will get cancelled isn't it this will get cancelled so k b a by k b b and that is given as 1 by h and this ratio they have asked as x by y and they are asking what is y and they are asking what is y x by y is equal to 1 by 8 and y is 8 y is 8 answer should be 8 answer should be 8 isn't it That, that's a direct substitution okay next 2 NOCl giving 2 NO plus Cl2 in an experiment 2 moles of NOCl placed in 1 liter flask and the concentration of NO after equilibrium established was found to be 0.4 the equilibrium constant at 30 degrees celsius is dash into 10 power minus 4 so how is going to be the condition 2 NOCl giving 2 NO plus Cl2 starting with the 2 mole 0 0 it is 2 minus x this will be x and this will be x by 2 2 mole give 2 mole 1 mole so x converted you get 2 minus x remaining x gives 2 gives 2 x gives x and here x 1 mole so x by 2 now the equilibrium concentration of no given as 0.4 so this is given as 0.4 quite naturally this will be 0.2 and this will be 2 minus 0.4 1.6 and you get your answer k is equal to no square no square 0.4 square into 0.2 divided by 1.6 square that is 4 into 4 into 0.2 divided by 16 into 16 isn't it 0.4 square that is 0.4 0.4 1.6 just add just one digit you get 4 into 4 16 into 16 so it will be this 116 will cancel you get 0.2 divided by 16 0.2 divided by 16 that is that is somewhat 20 divided by 16 into 10 power minus 2 20 divided by 16 will be 1 point 1 point 4 1.2 2 2 now it is 8 1.25 into 10 power minus 2 that is 125 into 10 power minus 4 answer should be 125 answer should be 125 as you have 10 power minus 4 given in the answer 125 should be the entered answer okay let us examine 125 is the correct answer okay next the limiting molar conductivities of nai na no3 ag no3 are given we want agi we want agi 
AGI will be NAI plus AGNO3 minus NNO3. NAI plus AGNO3 minus NNO3. So what is the value for NAI? What is the value for NAI? NAI 12.7. AGNO3. AGNO3. 13.3. Add. Add. How much you get? 26. Now, now subtract NAI, AG, NO3. Now subtract NA, NO3. This is addition subtracting 12. You get uh, 14. Answer should be 14. Answer should be 14. Exactly. Answer is 14. Polarized slow. Application of polarized slow. The limiting molar conductivity will be the sum of molar conductivities of limiting molar conductivities of individual ions. And we were doing many problems based on that from the textbook and otherwise. It's application of polarized law. We want, we want AGI. What do we do? NAI plus AGNO3 subtract NANO3. You get AGI. Isn't it? Right. Next question. Sixth question. The rate constant for first order reaction is given by the equation. The activation energy for the reaction is. Activation energy for the reaction is. You know, K is equal to A E raised to minus E A by R T. And hence, ln K is equal to ln A minus E A by R T. Now, from the question, it is clear that Ea by R equal to this data. So, Ea by R is equal to 2 into 10 raised to 4. Isn't it? So, what is Ea? Ea is equal to 2 into 10 raised to 4 into 8.3. How much you get? 1... 166, right? 166. Or you can write 2 into 83 into 10 raised to 3 joules. That is 2 into 83, 166 kilojoules. Answer is 166. Answer is 166. Direct, simple mathematical calculation. 166 should be the answer. Agreed. Next. Number of statements correct. How many statements are correct? Cu2 complexes are paramagnetic. Yes, because it is D9 system. That's a true statement. That is a true statement. Cu complexes are colorless. Yes, that is also true because it is D10 system. Cu1 is easily oxidized. That is correct because Cu1 is less stable compared to Cu2+. plus which is compensated by the hydration enthalpy. Very important point dealt in the chapter NCRT we are dealing with. Cu1, Cu2 in aqua solution. Cu2 is more stable because of the compensating hydration enthalpy of Cu2+. plus. In felling solution, active species Cu1, that is wrong. It is Cu2. In felling solution, we have copper sulfate solution. We have copper sulfate solution. So, three statements are correct. Three statements are correct. Answer three. Next. Acidified potassium permanganate solution oxidizes oxalic acid. The spin only magnetic moment of manganese product formed in the above reaction. Acidified potassium permanganate. Acidified potassium permanganate in acid medium, you will be getting Mn2 plus. And Mn2 plus will be D5 system. D5 system means number of unpaired electron is 5. Number of unpaired electron 5 means magnetic moment is 5.9. What is the what is the formula? What is the formula? Mu is equal to 
root of n into n plus 2 root of 5 into 5 plus 2 that is root 35 which is 5.9 number of unpaired electron 5 means you do not have to calculate you must know number of unpaired electron 1 1.7 magnetic moment 1.7 Number of unpaired electron 2, 2.8, 3, 3.8, 4, 4.9, 5, 5.9. The magnetic moment and the number of unpaired electron you can directly correlate, right? So, here Mn2 plus having 5 unpaired electron means the magnetic moment is 5.9 and we want a nearest integer. So, the answer should be 6. Answer should be 6, right? And we are not concerned about what is happening to oxalic acid. Just, just, just. Uh, no need to comment about that. We are talking about acidified potassium permanganate. In acidified medium, potassium permanganate is converted to Mn2 plus. Mn2 plus is D5 system. Okay, next. Two elements A and B which form 0.15 mole of A2B, AB3 type compound. If both A2B, AB3 weigh equally, then atomic weight of A is dash times atomic weight of B. So, see 0.15 mole of both the compounds weigh equal. That means 1 mole weight is equal. That means molar mass is equal. Isn't it? 0.15 mole weight of the two compounds are equal. That means their molar mass is equal. 1 mole of both the compounds having equal weight. That means their molar mass is equal. Right? So, what do we, what do we apply? Molar mass is equal. Molar mass of a to B equal to molar mass of A B 3. That means 2 A plus B is equal to A plus 3 B. So, what do we get? What do we get? 2 A minus A that is A is equal to 3 B minus B that is 2 B over. The atomic weight of A is dash times atomic weight of B. 2 times, 2 times, answer is 2, answer is 2, 2 times, right. And here we have the last question. The total number of possible isomers of dimethyl cyclopentane. We want stereo isomers. We want stereo isomers. Total number of possible stereo bond dimethyl cyclopentane if you take dimethyl cyclopentane this is cyclopentane having dimethyl there is no stereo isomerism no stereo isomerism okay meanwhile this is having stereo isomerism this will have stereo isomerism one two what are the possibilities if you take this one like this. If you take like this, that means both the methyl groups are on same side. That is cis configuration. Cis configuration is optically inactive. Cis configuration is optically inactive. Cis configuration can be in the two different forms which are identical. It can be like this or see like this or like this like this or like this both are cis and they are identical what about trans what about trans trans will be optically active trans means one like this one like this this will be optically active and you will have dextro and levo is it clear so cis form is optically inactive due to meso product while trans will be optically active you will have dextro and levo so that is one case but uh, we can get uh, one more we can get one more yes we can get one more why can't the substitution be like this one here and one here see this is one two dimethyl why can't it be one three one three can be like this this is this is once again cis. Cis is optically inactive. Cis is optically inactive as it turns meso. And trans will be optically active. The trans form of that will be optically active. 
if you take the configuration like this, the trans will be optically active and this will have dextro and levo. So, how many stereoisomers? Is there any other possibilities? 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 2, 1, 3. So, only over. 1, 2, 1, 3 are possible. 1, 2 and 1, 3 are possible. And in 1, 2, 1, 3, cis is inactive and trans is active. So, this is meso. This is meso. Both are one product. Here you have dextro levo. Here you have two products. And here this is meso. Only one product. Here this is dextro levo. You have two products. So, 2 plus 2, 4 plus 2. The answer should be 6 answer should be 6 ok answer should be 6 you have 6 stereo isomers possible in that case wow here we have that uh, diagrams let's go through that diagrams in detail once again let's have a look at the diagrams in detail once again even though i have drawn it you see 1 1 dimethyl no stereo isomer 1 1 dimethyl no stereo isomer 1, 2 dimethyl, 1, 2 dimethyl, they are identical. This is cis and it is meso. Cis can be like this or like this. And this is trans. Trans will be enantiomeric form. Trans can be enantiomeric form. One can be dextro, one can be levo. So, 1, 2, 3. Okay. Now, coming to here, 1, 3 dimethyl, 1, 3 dimethyl, once again, cis, they are identical. You have only one product. Trans, you have enantiomers, dextro and levo. If one is dextro, the other will be levo. So, totally two enantiomeric pairs, four products and two identical symbol products, one and one. So, it is two plus two, four plus one, six uh, products you will get. And uh, that was the last question from that paper. We were discussing the G mains paper which was conducted 2022 June session, 27th June morning session paper we were discussing. Okay, with another discussion, we will meet in another class. Till then, bye, see you, take care.